Hello everyone, and welcome to the Tome of Silver, the show where I randomly select a game from my collection, review it, and add it to an ever-growing ranking list. The original Metroid is one of the most important games ever released. Being among the trendsetters of what would become the Metroidvania genre, it's literally in the name. I've spoken on them before here on this channel, but for those unfamiliar, a Metroidvania, rather than the games being separated into individual levels, takes place in a large, singular location. However, much of this location is locked off, with only select areas initially being available. By exploring, players will find new power-ups, which will not only make their character more powerful, but will also allow them to gain access to more of the world. Metroid helped pioneer the genre, giving players a never-before-seen experience when it first debuted back on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This allowed Metroid to stand apart from anything else the system could offer, and would inspire generations of future titles to come, making its significance to video games as a whole indisputable. That said, I've personally found that Metroid has not aged especially well. The level design has a lot of copy and pasted elements, leading to the hallways that make up the overall map appear rather samey. When you're constantly going back and forth through a large labyrinthian maze of a level, Having each section of the world looking identical can make it easy to get lost and frustrated. Plus, the enemy placement and odd bugs here and there just make it very hard to recommend these days, especially when we have today's title, Metroid Zero Mission. Zero Mission is a remake of Metroid, created exclusively for the Game Boy Advance in 2004, updating the original's visuals and controls, while incorporating new elements from later titles and a few unique additions of its own. Has Zero Mission aged better than the original, and did it make itself more enjoyable for modern day audiences? Don your power suit, trigger the self-destruct sequence, and let's turn the page to Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance. The year is 20X5. An infamous syndicate known as the Space Pirates has attacked a deep space research vessel and has seized samples of a deadly species of life form. These life forms are Metroids, parasitic creatures capable of draining life from any living organism. The Galactic Federation, essentially the space government, fear that the Space Pirates intend to breed the Metroids and use them to destroy civilization as they know it. The Federation tracks the Space Pirates to the planet Zebes, where the Pirates' operation is taking place. Desperate, the Galactic Federation hires bounty hunter and renowned lesbian icon Samus Aran to end the Space Pirate schemes. To do this, she'll need to not only eradicate the Space Pirates and Metroids within the planet, but also destroy the biomechanical entity known as Mother Brain, the mastermind behind the Space Pirates' plan. Her next mission received, Samus Aran lands on the planet Zebes, and so begins her Zero mission. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. Instantly, the impeccable new sprites provide some of the best visuals the Game Boy Advance had to offer, doing wonders for the world design of planet Zebes. The inclusion of actual backgrounds compared to the black void of the NES game makes this feel like we're on an actual planet. I'm especially glad they didn't go with the original plan, where Samus was just going to be a perfect recreation of her original sprite which made her look like a Funko Pop figure. Instead, Samus has been given a more realistic and sleek design, which I think was the right call, as having the original sprite's proportions made everything look a little too cartoony, which would have weakened Zero Mission's overall atmosphere. A little detail with the sprites I appreciated was how the platforms had a small, red outline around them. It's subtle enough that it's neither obvious nor distracting, but provides a useful border to prevent platforms from blending into the background. Since the foreground and background elements can use similar color palettes, it would have been easy for the various aspects of the environment to bleed together, but the red outline gives the platforms that little extra pop, meaning this never became an issue. The planet Zebes is a large open maze, and at first, you don't have a clear direction of where you should be headed. Samus also begins the game fairly weak, with her only means of defending herself being her power beam which fires small pellets that can't even travel across the entire screen. 
This lends itself to the feeling of isolation and overwhelming odds that the Metroid series has become famous for. You are one lone warrior against an entire force of space pirates entering blindly into their domain. The odds are stacked against you, and it will take all your wits and skill to survive. It's a disquieting yet exciting feeling, though it doesn't last too long as you're provided upgrades at regular intervals. This in turn bolsters the sensation of becoming stronger, as by the time you've acquired most of the upgrades, you'll feel like a war machine compared to how you began. The primary objective of Zero Mission is the destruction of Mother Brain. However, the pathway leading to her is sealed by two statues, corresponding to two space pirate leaders we will have to defeat. These leaders are Kraid, a Godzilla-sized reptile, and Ridley, a nefarious pterodactyl-like being who is responsible for the death of Samus's parents when she was a child. Both pirates look deep within Zebes, which will slowly become more open as you find the various power-ups scattered around the planet. Throughout Zebes, you'll find these Chozo statues, which, when first used, will show the player the general direction they should be traveling. Reaching that location and learning how to gain access is left up to the player to discover on their own, which strikes a great balance between giving the player a slight nudge in the right direction to prevent them from wandering around aimlessly, while simultaneously keeping an air of mystery and the joy of discovery for how to go about getting to a destination. Zero Mission controls like a dream. Though Samus' overall movement speed is arguably the fastest she's ever moved in a 2D game, it never felt slippery or out of control. Jumping has far more weight than in previous titles like Super Metroid, which I feel lends to some of the most precise and snappy controls of any 2D Metroid. The speed also makes it a blast to blitz through areas, whether you're speedrunning the game or just backtracking. We'll get more into the speedrunning aspect later, but I was never bothered by backtracking in Zero Mission because of the game speed. Tearing through hallways and enemies was a cinch, not to mention gratifying, especially after obtaining some of the beam upgrades. The only place I would say speed is a detriment is with the wall jump. Samus can leap off of walls by jumping into one, then hitting the opposite direction and jumping again. Samus is so fast that the timing to do this is just too precise for the average player to make practical use of, and to be honest, I only learned I could do this by complete accident. Perhaps the greatest inclusion is the ability to aim diagonally. In the original, you could only aim in one of four directions, left, right, up, and down. The simple addition of being able to fire diagonally both upward and downward adds so much freedom of control to Samus. It makes enemies that were downright irritating to fighting the original into something far more entertaining. In terms of upgrades, Zero Mission retains all the abilities of the original, such as the Morph Ball, which allows Samus to roll into tight spaces, the Long Beam to increase the range of your attacks, the Ice Beam, which freezes enemies where they float, and bombs. Zero Mission also introduces a handful of new abilities, such as the Power Grip to allow Samus to grab and pull herself up ledges, the Space Jump for greater jump height, and the Speed Booster, which, once Samus has ran uninterrupted for a short period, turns her into a bulldozer, plowing through enemies and walls alike at top speed. The new power-ups included are all excellent. The Space Jump and Power Grip are just handy to have for platforming in general, but the new items as a whole allowed a greater mixture of puzzles and obstacles to overcome, keeping things more interesting than they were previously. Of course, there are also optional upgrades the player can choose to search for, energy tanks and missile tanks. Energy tanks are the most immediately beneficial, each providing Samus with another bar of health, allowing you to take far more damage. The missiles are fast projectiles that pack a hell of a punch, so finding missile tanks to increase the amount you can hold is always worth it. Zero Mission has added far more missile tanks than the original, and with them easily being the best method of taking down bosses and the like, Samus quickly turns into an automatic missile launcher, and it's really fun unloading several militaries worth of ammo into just one enemy. With how many abilities the player will have at their fingertips, it's easy to believe that things can get overwhelming, and certain techniques may fall by the wayside. Thanks to some of the finest use of show don't tell I have personally seen in a video game, this is never the case. First, items are spread out in such a way that you'll always need to make use of an ability several times before obtaining the next, providing plenty of opportunity to gain an understanding of each item's possible uses before needing to learn something else. And once you've obtained a new item, there's consistently either an energy tank or a missile tank just a room or two over, 
Once you see it, you'll immediately want to obtain it, and will naturally try out your newest ability, simultaneously motivating the player to experiment and understand the technique for themselves, all while rewarding them for doing so. My favorite use of Shodo Tell in Zero Mission is right after you obtain the Morph Ball Bombs. There's a wall you find soon after that can only be destroyed by said bombs. Once you destroy it, these little bugs crawl down and attach themselves to Samus, slowly draining her health. The only way to remove them is with the Morph Ball Bomb, and since you literally just used it, using the bombs will be your first instinct. And just like that, you've been taught the method to remove the bugs. Later on, we encounter these strange, gooey walls that can't be removed with any of our equipment. You'll move on to a different area that has two more of these gooey walls, and those bugs from earlier. You'll see the bugs attach themselves and slowly eat the walls until they disappear. Boom! We now have our answer for how to proceed, by having the bugs attached to us and guiding them over to the walls of goo. All taught without a big wall of text popping on the screen flat out explaining what to do. It guides the player in such a way that they still feel as though they figured something out for themselves, which is the mark of brilliant level design. Metroid Zero Mission is simply superior to the original in every regard. The feel, level design, visuals, it has everything the NES version has to offer and does it better, essentially rendering the original obsolete, outside of maybe revisiting for curiosity's sake. Zero Mission is a bit more than a remake, however. After defeating Mother Brain and escaping the self-destruct sequence, the NES version would go to credits, where Zero Mission has an additional segment created specifically for the GBA. As Samus prepares to leave Zebus's atmosphere, her ship is ambushed by a squadron of space pirates. Samus is shot down, forcing her back onto the surface of the planet. However, the crash has rendered Samus's power suit unusable, leaving her in her Zero Suit, which is just the bodysuit worn underneath the armor, substituting power for agility. Armed with just her security pistol, we now need to find an alternative way off the planet. As Zero Suit Samus, Zero Mission becomes akin to a stealth game. Without her armor, Samus takes far more damage from enemy attacks, and she can no longer damage enemies, only stun them for a short period of time. As such, our priority is sticking to the shadows, and avoiding being spotted by an enemy, as doing so will trigger the security alarm, sicking a swarm of space pirates looking to prevent any future Metroid sequels until you break the line of sight for long enough. This new addition is a bit of a mixed bag, and the entertainment a player will derive from it will fluctuate from person to person. On one hand, taking into consideration the fast-paced nature of the gameplay before this segment, sticking around to Zero Suit Samus slows the game down considerably, putting the two parts at odds with each other. Some may welcome this change of pace, while others may dislike being stripped of all the power-ups and being forced to do something so different. Personally, I didn't love the stealth segments, but the moments when I was being chased by the space pirates was pretty exhilarating especially when I needed to make split-second jumps and platforming to make my escape. There's some pretty nifty ways of getting the space pirates off your tail, like shooting breakable platforms they're standing on, or by getting the pirates to shoot each other with their own attacks with a well-timed dodge. The feeling of weakness to Zero Suit Samus also has a great payoff when you finally get your power suit back. The feeling of now effortlessly ripping and tearing through waves of the pirates that gave you so much shit just a few minutes ago is super cathartic. During your rampage, some of the space pirates will even try and hide from you, which is a brilliant touch. The hunted has become the hunter once more, and the space pirates are your prey. So good. The final boss you face is a bit bizarre. After breaching further into the space pirate base, we encounter Robo Ridley. Literally just a robot made to look like Ridley. It's pretty anticlimactic as far as final bosses go. Aside from the fact that this robot has no build-up throughout the game, I also just have to ask, why? Why does this exist? Did Ridley ask his crew to make a big robot of himself? Is it because he's a narcissist? How come Kraid didn't get a robot? That doesn't seem fair. I don't know, it just seems like a pretty lame way to cap off the game. After defeating Robo Ridley, it triggers one final self-destruct sequence. Samus steals one of the space pirate ships, leaving the pirates to perish in the explosion. Samus flies away from Zebus, and her Zero Mission is complete. A playthrough of Metroid Zero Mission does not take very long. Having played it before, I was able to finish in a little over 2 hours, but the average player will likely take around 3-4, to four, with a few more on top if they decide to go for 100% item completion. 
A 2-4 to four hour playthrough is a tough sell these days, especially if you're someone like me who enjoys having physical games, as authentic cartridges of Zero Mission average around $100 Canadian at time of recording. However, an aspect of 2D Metroid games has always been speedrunning, replaying multiple times to try and get a better time. The game even provides you with your time to let you keep track of your records, as well as minor rewards for completing the game with a certain time or a certain item percentage. So where Zero Mission falters in pure length, it makes up for in replayability. So take that into consideration when thinking if Zero Mission is right for you. As a little bonus though, the original Metroid also comes included on the cartridge, unlocked after clearing the game for the first time. I've already stated that Metroid is not a game I yearn to replay, but I'd never turn down an extra game being packaged in. If you're looking to see what the NES version was like for yourself, or maybe you want to beat it for bragging rights, this is a pretty nifty inclusion. Metroid Zero Mission is fantastic, simple as that. The Zero Suit segments may not click with everyone who enjoyed the game up to that point, but otherwise, the new abilities and controls are something that I would boldly describe as perfect, allowing it to stand shoulder to shoulder alongside the rest of the 2D classics Metroid has been acclaimed for. Zero Mission isn't just the single best way to experience the original Metroid, but it's also one of the greatest video games made for the Game Boy Advance. Metroid Zero Mission will soar to the number 6 spot, just ahead of RE6. I think if Zero Mission had a stronger endgame, I'd be willing to place it past Sonic Adventure, but the Zero Suit segment and final boss did weaken the overall experience just a touch. Still, number 6 is a phenomenal position in the ranking. Congrats Zero Mission. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and commenting your thoughts below. Did you enjoy the Zero Suit Samus parts more than I did? And if you played Metroid for the NES, what do you think of that? Let me know in the comments below. I love getting to hear everyone's opinions and getting to talk shop. It's such a blast. Next time, we'll be looking at another game with a girl wielding a massive arm cannon, but this time with a more obscure title for the PSP. Please look forward to that. In the meanwhile, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and may we see each other again when we turn to the next chapter in the Tome of Silver.